The term psychoanalysis is either met with ecstatic fandom or uneasy skepticism. For some, the romantic idea of an unconscious that mysteriously directs human behavior and whose direction can be solely explained through a heroic journey into one's mind is enough to keep their attention. For the critics, such an idea flies in the face of the scientific method. And in reference to the schools of Adler and Freud, who felt that our unconscious directed us towards singular goals such as pleasure or power, the skeptically inclined can't help but launch accusations of reductionism. Thankfully, for those who wish for an eloquent theory of psychoanalysis, deeply rooted in philosophical theory and supported by newer fields such as positive psychology, there is logotherapy, which professes that the will to meaning is the singular driving force of human behavior. But in order to understand this theory, we should become better acquainted with its founder, Viktor Frankl, who tested his own idea as well as one of the many victims of Nazi concentration camps. Born in March 26, 1905 in Vienna to Jewish parents, Frankel quickly took an interest in psychology and the desire for meaning while he took a night class on applied psychology in junior high. This interest brought him to the University of Vienna, where he specialized in neurology and psychiatry with a focus on depression. The more well-read Frankel became, the more he began to question Freud's at the time prominent theory behind psychoanalysis. This may have encouraged Frankel to join Alfred Adler's circle of students. Adler and Freud disagreed mainly on whether pleasure or power were the drivers of human motivation. However, Frankel would quickly develop his own idea, distinct from the two others. He insisted that meaning, not power, was the force which directed human behavior. Unfortunately, this led to his expulsion from Adler's circle. Frankel continued his career serving the mentally unwell. In 1928, he would set up a free youth counseling center in Vienna to help students who became increasingly depressed around the end of the academic year. The center was a complete success, noted by the fact that during 1931, not a single student had taken their life. Frankel would also begin a private practice at this time. However, the emergence of the Nazis greatly limited his ability to practice. The consequences of World War II would continue to greatly deprive Frankel of everything he loved. Nine months after him and his wife married, Frankel and his family were sent to a concentration camp. There, his father would die of starvation. Afterwards, he was transferred to Auschwitz, where his mother and brother were gassed. His wife, taken to a separate camp, would never see Frankel again and die from typhus. Over three years, Frankel was taken to four different camps. The time he spent in the camps greatly shaped his view of psychology. He noticed the capacity for individuals to persevere through humor and heroism, and to always choose their attitude in confronting a situation, no matter how terrible. He came to understand the importance of suffering in life, and most importantly, he affirmed the idea that the drive towards meaning is the primary motivational force behind humanity. After the war, Frankel became the head of a neurology department in Vienna. He would work with patients there until his retirement in the 1970s. During his time as a therapist and professor, he would advocate for the use of Socratic dialogue so as to encourage clients to tap into their spiritual unconscious. Much of his career was spent denouncing the reductionism found in behaviorism. Frankel would also write Man's Search for Meaning over a nine-day period. The book is a retelling of his experience in the camps, as well as his own theory behind the meaninglessness that pervades modern society, as well as his own remedy against it. Frankel would remarry and live a peaceful life advocating for mental health and compassion. He would pass away in 1977 due to heart failure. What is logotherapy? We can consider it to be the summation of Frankel's theory he had initially developed in the camps. Above all, it's the theory that meaning drives motivation. As Frankel writes, ultimately man should not ask what the meaning of his life is, but rather he must recognize that it is he who is asked. In a word, each man is questioned by life, and he can only answer to life by answering for his own. This is based upon the Danish philosopher Kierkegaard's own will to meaning, which was seen as a mission to find one's values and purpose in a seemingly purposeless world. There are three main principles to logotherapy. Firstly, life is considered to have meaning under all circumstances, even in the most depraved and miserable of conditions. This was developed from Frankel's observations in the camps that many individuals still live purposefully and with great freedom despite their deprivation. 
Secondly, logotherapy argues that the main motivation for living is the will to find meaning in life. It is not enough to say that life has meaning in all circumstances. We must also put effort into finding meaning through the pursuit of responsibility and love. Finally, logotherapy recognizes that we have freedom to find meaning in our actions, our experiences, and last but not least, in the attitude we adopt in the face of suffering. As Frankl writes, man's freedom is no freedom from conditions, but rather freedom to take a stand on whatever conditions might confront him. Of course, there are serious barriers to our quest for meaning. Frankl recognizes affluence, hedonism, and materialism as serious issues. He argues that pleasure must have a reason behind it that goes beyond the mere pursuit of pleasure itself. As he argues, cutting off the objects to which such experiences refer must eventuate in an impoverishment of psychology. For Frankl, context is one of the key elements of purpose, hence he's skeptical of the use of LSD in order to achieve divine encounters. As he writes, chemical causes are substitutes for spiritual reasons, the effects are mere artifacts, the shortcut winds up as a blind alley. Instead, Frankl considers pleasure's enemy, suffering, to be a far more legitimate path to meaning. This is not due to suffering itself, but rather how one handles it. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Of course, nowhere does he suggest that suffering should be pursued, nor did he advocate for unnecessary suffering. However, he did recognize its value, especially in situations where there are no other realms towards meaning. What are the three principal ways in which man can find meaning in life? The first, as Frankl explains, is through what we give to the world, the creative realm. The second is what we take from the world, through what we experience and encounter. Finally, we can experience meaning through how we take a stand against a fate we cannot change. Frankl believed in a sort of determinism in which man can resist suffering through detachment and choose their own attitudes. This, in turn, shapes their character and allows them to take responsibility for their life. Specific techniques in logotherapy also emerge that are still used to this day. For example, Frankl proposed paradoxical intention in which clients learn to overcome their neurotic obsessions through self-distancing and humor. Using the idea of what you resist persists, Frankl would do such things as making an insomniac focus on staying up as long as possible. Paradoxically, they would fall asleep. This humorous technique speaks to Frankl's love of humor in the pursuit of meaning. The attempt to develop a sense of humor and to see things in a humorous light is some kind of trick learned while mastering the art of living. Yet, it is possible to practice the art of living even in a concentration camp, although suffering is omnipresent. One of the most important aspects of Frankl's work is that of love. Although it does not necessarily follow the academic and empirical work done with logotherapy, the significance of love and the pursuit of meaning is an apparent cornerstone in Frankl's work. Love is the only way to grasp another human being in the innermost core of his personality. He sees that which is potential in him, which is not yet actualized, but yet ought to be actualized. Furthermore, by his love, the loving person enables the beloved person to actualize these potentialities. This is beautifully reflected in a passage of Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. While working on a trench in the camp, months after his wife and family had been taken from him, Frankl observed the grayness of dawn. Gray was the sky above, gray the snow in the pale light of dawn, gray the rags in which my fellow prisoners were clad, and gray their faces. I was again conversing silently with my wife or perhaps I was struggling to find the reason for my sufferings, my slow dying. In a last violent protest against the hopelessness of imminent death, I sensed my spirit piercing through the enveloping gloom. I felt it transcend that hopeless, meaningless world, and from somewhere I heard a victorious yes in answer to my question of the existence of an ultimate purpose.